In this video, I'm going to discuss quickly what a server is. Uh, you guys will be doing a discussion and a little bit of research on your own. Uh, but just kind of wanted to get you thinking about what actually is a server. Uh, many of you have probably never experienced one before. And if you have, awesome. You can bring your um, experience into the classroom and help, help others and bring that experience into the discussion as well. Uh, when I think of a server, I just think of a specialized computer and a specialized computer that has um, redundancy built in. So I'm talking multiple hard drives, typically in what's called like a RAID configuration, multiple power supplies, usually dual processors. Um, and what that specialized computer does is it uh, serves up, hence the name server, it serves up some sort of role or service on the network. So for example, in this class, we'll be installing uh, DHCP. Uh, the role or the service that it would provide on the network would be handing out IP addresses in terms of DHCP. We'll also install Active Directory. So in uh, that situation, Active Directory would be the role and it would uh, provide the service of Active Directory on the network. And Active Directory helps with uh, user logins, um, organizing the network, connecting devices and finding devices, uh, amongst other things such as group policy um, for the network. I'm just gonna flip over real quick uh, what I'm looking at right now is uh, just server 2022 and as you can see uh, it looks just like a Windows uh, system. It's got a start menu and it's got um, applications and whatnot built in uh, but really the the power of the Windows server is the ability to go to manage up here and then add roles and features. Now a role is going to be something that's um, like I talked about earlier a service on the network that will um, do something for all of the clients or users on the network. So for example, again, DHCP, DNS, a file server, a print server, email server, um, a game server, all those types of servers provide a service on the network. That's considered a role. A feature is just something specific to this uh, particular machine. And to give you an example of that, I'll just get right into the wizard. I'm not actually going to install anything, but want to show you the options here. Um, Role-based or feature-based installations, what we'll choose 100% of the time typically in this class. So here's all the roles that my server can, be, can become. Active Directory Certificate Server, Domain Services, DHCP, DNS, a fax server, Hyper-V, Remote Access, Volume Activation Server, a web server, a uh, server update server, a uh, Windows deployment service, which would be pushing out images of um, like Windows 10 or Windows 11 um, to machines. And so you can see a, a list of roles here. Features, again, features are specific to this machine. So if I want to be able to encrypt the hard drive on this server, I would install the BitLocker drive encryption feature. Well, that's something that's already installed on Windows 10 and Windows 11, but it's not on a server because it um, typically servers don't utilize that. Another one that you might take for granted is wireless LAN service. So on a Windows 10, Windows 11 machine, you can always connect to uh, a wireless network. But on a server, you can't by default. So if I had a wireless card in this server, what I would need to do is install this wireless LAN service. Another very common one uh, that's added is the Windows Server Backup so that we can back up this server. So you can see all the different features uh, that are available here with this server. So again, just kind of think of a specialized computer that's going to perform some sort of function or role on the network. Uh, I pulled up Dell's website. Uh, Dell is a place where you can get, get servers, actual physical hardware. Uh, servers, um, HP, Lenovo, there's a whole wide variety. I'm just going out to Dell uh, because I find its uh, website well, relatively easy to use for the servers. Now there's two types of servers, well there's more than two types, but the main two types I should say are either a rack mounted, so here's a rack mounted server, and those are measured in terms of what they call U's. So 1U, 2U, 3U, 4U, 5U, that's how thick they are. So these servers I'm looking at in this picture are 2U. This would be a 2U as well. Uh, not seeing any 1Us on this particular page. Uh, we'll find one here in just a minute. A tower server looks more like you know a tower computer, uh, like you would have for a desktop. Here's a 1U server right there. 
so the bigger they are, the you know more adding cards they can hold, the more processors, the more RAM, all these sorts of things. I'm just going to do a quick price out for a rack server, and I would invite you guys to do the same thing. Uh, it's kind of eye-opening, plus it's kind of cool to see all the different um, customized options. So let's pretend I want you know a, a four processor uh, server. I could select four processor just by checking it. And if I want AMD, I can just check it. If I want a 2U, I can just check it. So that's why I like to do uh, Dell's website here. But I'll go with a two socket, that's pretty common. Um, I will go with a 2U server. It's gonna give me more hard drive capacity. And you can see this one right here is already $9,000. Uh, so they get very expensive very quickly. I'll start with this PowerEdge R740XD. This is the uh, the two U server. Here's just some pictures of it. Here's the inside. So you can got two processors, uh, two power supplies here. Um, where's the RAM? So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, I think I'm counting. Oh, there's some more up here. So I got rows and rows and rows of, or slots and slots and slots, I should say, for, for RAM. So I could really load this thing up. Uh, so you get down into your selections here. I want TPM 2.0. Uh, I want to be able to have 24 hard drives. Uh, two and a half inch, or I got NVMEs. I'll go with the two and a half inch. That's usually a good price point. More expensive for the chassis, but the hard drives will be cheaper. Uh, fans. I want performance fans. Uh, the performance fans typically will spin up a little bit um, faster. They'll also typically provide for a little bit quieter operation. Um, kind of depends where it's at. I don't need it, but if I wanted to add it, I could. Now I get to choose my processors. I can choose the Xeon Gold Gold line, the Silver line, um, Bronze line, and I think that's all as low as I get. So right now they're giving me a Xeon uh, Bronze line. It's 1.9 gigahertz. It runs at eight cores and eight threads, so it's not doing hyper-threading. Uh, the bus speed is 9.6. Uh, what's the GT? I can't remember what the T stands for at the top of my head right now. Uh, but you can see the, the bus speed for that it has uh, 11 megabytes of cache. Uh, so it says no turbo, no, no hyper threading. So maybe you want to bump up. Uh, what's the, the Cadillac here? Um, let's see, a 28 core. Looks like 28 core. It's the most expensive one. So maybe I give it a 28 core processor. Remember, that's just one processor. I need two processors. I need them to match. So I go and I add that additional processor. Oh, maybe it already added for me. And then I need RAM. Um, so it's not uncommon. Here's the speed. Yeah, that's good. I want at least four sticks of memory. Actually, we'll go eight. That way, I'll have four. Four for each um, processor. So uh, different banks of uh, RAM typically will be dedicated to a specific processor. So right now, I have. I'm saying I'm going to have eight um, sticks of memory in there. And maybe I want each one to be 16 gigs. And I haven't been out here for a while, so I'm, kind of, I'm probably messing this up a little bit. But, um, you know, if you ever have to price out a server or you want to just see. You need a RAID controller for all your hard drives. I need all the hard drives still. Uh, it's giving me a one terabyte hard drive, six of them, six one terabyte. Uh, hard drives, and I'm already up to $20,000. Uh, so it doesn't take long to get um, up there, you know, with your price for servers. And I still have my software. Am I going to run VMware? Am I going to run 
um, Windows Server, all of that I'm going to need. Um, when you're configuring your hard drives, uh, typically you want this in a RAID array. We'll talk more about storage in a different chapter, but just to give you guys uh, a little quick intro into a RAID array. Um, so here's a RAID 5. RAID 5 gives you the power of multiple disks plus we have the ability for one disk to fail. Essentially what happens is when you write data to a RAID 5, and this is it's a common setup for a server but kind of an older outdated uh, way. Typically I like to go with like a RAID 10 um, setup uh, or a RAID 50 even. I'll let you guys explore that if you want. Uh, but here I am striping the data or writing the data I should probably say across all of these disks, these first four. And then on this fifth disk what I'm doing is writing some parity information. Basically it's a mathematical calculation of these other bits of data. The next thing that gets written to the disk gets striped across these first three disks and then the, the fifth one. So what would happen is if, let's pretend this entire disk failed over here, this fifth disk, I would have enough information from the other four disks plus the parity information to rebuild this lost disk. And that's huge for servers because servers typically never get shut off. Uh, with older style mechanical drives that are still used, they fail uh, quite frequently. So we don't want to lose our data. So we put them in some sort of a RAID array that will allow us to lose a disk, put in a replacement, and then rebuild um, that data. Um, so in order to do that, you need a specialized server, you need a specialized motherboard, uh, you need a RAID card, and you typically want to do RAID, I say 99 times out of 100, you want to do it with hardware RAID, which means you have a card dedicated to handle that. So if I go up here, this is the card, the internal storage. Windows and Linux can also do some what's called software RAID for you, uh, but I don't typically like that because now you are having the operating system do disk functions, and we want the operating system to do operating system things, not necessarily disk functions. It will work if you need to, and there's some good use cases, but uh, typically you don't want that. When you start getting into solid state drives for servers, you can see just how expensive they are, much, much more expensive than, say, a desktop uh, solid state drive. So I would invite you guys to come out here and play around. Um, you know, there's different sites, but Dell's pretty good. Uh, see if you can build a server. Uh, maybe a challenge for you is uh, see if you can build uh, what I would consider a pretty decent server for, say, under five grand. And a pretty decent server is typically going to have two processors. It's typically going to have uh, two power supplies, uh, typically going to have about 64 gigs of RAM, much more depending on the load and what it does. But, you know, I'm thinking small business, Active Directory server, file server, maybe, I don't know, 20 to 25 employees. That would maybe be a, um, a good sweet spot for RAM, um, maybe on the low side even. But um, see if you can build one for under five grand. Be a good challenge and a good learning experience for you. Um, other than that, I just kind of wanted to introduce, you know, what a server is, uh, get you thinking about it, maybe get you exploring it um, in terms of, you know, a hardware build or something like that. I guess one other thing I would say here before I sign off is uh, most servers are going to the cloud or they are going to virtual servers. And so what I mean by the cloud is so you guys went to Azure for education to download um, your server OS. Well, instead of actually having to go out and you know buy a physical server like this, and then uh, set it up, get it shipped, and all of that, you could simply pay Microsoft for one of their servers they have in their data center. And um, I won't be able to do a lot with it, but as a student, you get a hundred dollar credit, and that lasts a year. So if you want to do that, you sure can. Oops. Why isn't it allowing me to sign in?
There we go. Help if I use the right link. Uh, but I could come right here, virtual machines. And I could create a virtual machine. So this is going to be a server in the cloud, so an Azure virtual machine. And maybe I want to do a preset configuration. If I want to do that, I can, or I can do a customized one. Uh, but here's a general purpose. It's going to give me two CPUs, seven gigs of RAM, four CPUs, 14 gigs of RAM. So I can pick one of these if I want. I would have to have a subscription. We have, like I said, a $100 credit, so if you wanted to do this. And I could run through this wizard, and um, I could put an image. So this is Ubuntu. It's Linux. If I wanted to put a Windows server on there, I could. And then what it's going to do is, in the cloud, it's going to spin up this virtual machine. So sort of like what we are doing with VMware, except you know we have the, the hardware with VMware. We have our laptop or our desktop computer we're installing the, the image on. Uh, with this setup, with Azure and Amazon Web Services and Google's uh, cloud and all those different cloud services, uh, you're paying them for the hardware. And um, they are housing it and cooling it and powering it and all those different things. What you'll find out is this is pretty expensive. Uh, so it's you really need to uh, study it. You know, what is your your break-even point from going out and having a physical server and powering it and administering it and all of that versus paying someone like Microsoft or Google or Amazon to house um, the virtual server for you. Um, some administrators really, really like the cloud. Others do not um, because, you know, Microsoft now has your data, uh, which they kind of always do, but, you know, it's, it's stored in their data, their data centers now. Um, so there's a security aspect to it, um, and this class will get in a little bit into a hybrid environment where maybe we use a cloud service like Azure AD, Active Directory, uh, with a physical server, or maybe you just use Azure AD standalone without a physical server. So just some things to get you thinking about what a server is. Again, in the class shell, there is a discussion. We'll do a little bit of, a, uh, of uh, some research on you know what a server is, the topics can really be across the board. I want you to do a post and uh, cite a couple sources uh, just to kind of, again, think us, get us thinking about what a server is and what it's used for and some of the things to come for this class. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.